Are you a C-sharp developer interested in getting started with functional programming, but you're not sure where to begin? If so, this video is for you. The most important concept in functional programming is probably the idea that we can use functions as data. In other words, we can pass functions into other functions as parameters, or assign them to variables, and the variables will hold a reference to those functions. So. The first example I want to look at is, is really simple and all the examples in this video will be very simple and that's to uh, focus on the concepts rather than getting bogged down by distractions. So here we're using link queue on a list of users. We're filtering them by all the active users and we want to select the user's full name and then I have a, a special function I built here to just print them off to the console. So let's use this idea of uh, functions as data. And this is also called uh, first class functions, which means you can pass functions around everywhere. If you've used JavaScript, then using callbacks is, is basically th uh, exactly what we're looking at doing. So if you hover over the where statement, you'll see the signature for the where is expecting a func and the signature may be a little strange if, you, uh, if you've never done this before. So it's a func and it's using a generic uh, parameters here. So what it's uh, telling us is we need to pass in a user to the function and that function returns a boolean. So the order goes whatever comes in and then whatever comes out. So let's write a function to uh, basically name that function that we have. So we have a func, we're going to say is a user, let's say our active, let's just copy that over. There we go. So just to show you, I'm going to put that in. So instead of having an anonymous function, we have a named function. I'm going to call it our active. Let's do the same with this little function here. So instead of an anon instead of an anonymous function, we will name it There we go. So now we have, uh, of course, they're small functions. But imagine that these are maybe more complex, uh, complicated, complex, larger. Um, this part here becomes much more readable. So I want to talk about uh, how in C Sharp there's different ways to do this, to name functions. There's a newer way to do this that was introduced uh, not that long ago called local functions. Instead of having an anonymous function and naming it, you can have an actual function um, in a local scope. So let's do that. I'll show you what that looks like. So there we go. One's done. Simple enough. Same here, we're going to pass in a user. Now the question arises, how can I use these functions somewhere else? Right now we can only use it within this uh, block. How can I use these functions on a, let's say, a global scope? So the way you would do this in, let's say, JavaScript is you literally would just define a function wherever you want. Uh, you can't do that in C-sharp because it's an object-oriented programming language. So what we would do is create a static class or, uh, or a class, just a regular class. But in this case, we're going to call it uh, a static class. And all that means 
is anything you put in there has to be static. So it just enforces that everything in there is static. So we're going to make that a public static function. That becomes a public static function as well. Maybe we'll rename them. So functions are active. And there we go. So let me just run this in the console. I'll show you that this works. So here I'm printing off everyone who's active and I'm printing off their full names and to show you that this is actually working that way. Let's take the where clause off and we should see two new users in that list uh, because we're not filtering by the active users anymore. So now you can see French guy and some dude. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please subscribe if you did. Uh, if you have comments, good comments, nice comments, or constructive comments, I would love to hear back from you. Thank you so much.